Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a problem that involves analytical geometry. So you can pause the video at this point and then try the problem yourself first. Okay, so we have a circle with radius 1 that is tangent to the parabola y equals x squared at point b and to the x-axis at point c as shown. AB is parallel to OC, we're supposed to find AB, which is basically the distance between the points of tangency and the y-axis. Or we can also call this the x-coordinate of point B. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and make some uh, equations here. First of all, let's try to write the um, equation for the circle. Okay, so I'm going to start by marking the center here. So as you know, this is the point of tangency. So that's going to be a perpendicular segment here. Let's say this is um, the D is the center for the circle. Now, we do know that the circle has a radius of radius 1. I'm sorry, the circle has a radius 1. So this is going to be 1. And uh, let's call this the x coordinate of this point H. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to write the um, equation for the circle, okay? And then that equation, we're going to be setting it equal to the equation for the parabola and then solve them simultaneously, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and write the equation for the circle first. So that's going to look like the center is going to be h, comma 1, right? This is 1, by the way. So the center is going to be, d is going to be h, comma 1. And the radius is going to be 1 as well. Okay, so how do you write the equation for that one? It's going to be x minus h squared plus y minus 1 squared, which is equal to 1. Okay, so that's going to be the equation for our circle. And then, of course, uh, the circle intersects the parabola at b, which means they're tangent at that point. So... What, what, what that means is we can actually replace the y with x squared and that's going to give us the following equation where they intersect at that particular point. This is a particular point, by the way, not a general equation. y is going to equal x squared, so I can go ahead and replace y with x squared. Okay, so if I solve this equation for x, I'm basically going to be finding the x coordinate of the intersection point, which is this one. And that's going to give me the answer for AB. Okay, so let's see what else we can do here. Uh, we can also um, go off of the tangent. So here, the parabola is tangent to the circle, meaning that they actually have a common tangent, right, at that point. Which means that uh, the slope of the tangent at that point is uh, going to be equal. So let's go ahead and calculate the slope for both of these equations. For the first one, for the circle, let's go ahead and differentiate it. If you just differentiate like an implicit function, you're going to write 2 times the quantity x minus h plus 2 times the quantity y minus 1. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is y prime. And that's going to equal 0. If you solve for y prime here, you're just going to isolate um, basically the y prime term here and if you do that uh, you can actually go ahead and divide both sides by 2 and um, isolate the y prime and that should equal x minus h divided by y minus 1 with the negative sign so I'm just going to write it as 1 minus y okay so from the circle the slope of the tangent at point of tangency, which is point B, is going to be this one. So this is the slope of the tangent from the, from the circle. And then if you go ahead and use the parabola, you can just go ahead and differentiate it at point X. It's going to be 2X. So now since they have a common tangent at that point, the slopes are supposed to be equal to each other. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set them equal. So we're going to get x minus h over 1 minus y is equal to 2x from here. Okay? So 
Now, what does this give us? We can just go ahead and isolate x minus h here because I, it's something that I can use. That's going to be 2x multiplied by 1 minus y. And as we know that at point of tangency, y is equal to x squared because of the parabola. This is a point on the parabola. So in other words, the y coordinate of point B is going to be x squared because of the parabola. Okay, so I can just go ahead and replace the y here with x squared, then I'm going to be getting a really nice equation from here. For that particular point, again, this is a special case, not a general equation. But we also know that we have this equation at that particular point. So we can actually go ahead and put those together. What I can do is, in the top equation, I can replace x minus h with this quantity, 2x times 1 minus x squared. Then I'm just going to be getting an equation in x only. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that replacement. Replace x minus h with 2x multiplied by 1 minus x squared. So I'm supposed to square that plus x squared minus 1 squared is equal to 1. So by solving this equation, I'm going to be finding the x coordinate of point B, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm looking for, the x coordinate of point B. Okay. So, how do you solve this equation? Of course, it's not going to be super easy. We just have to expand it and see what it looks like. At this point, I can just take advantage of the product. So, square each factor like this first. And then I can go ahead and expand that. x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. And that's equal to 1. So, this is going to be actually a nice equation, which is not super bad. Let's go ahead and distribute this while well, maybe expand it first. 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the fourth minus 2x squared. And the whole thing is equal to zero. So one of the nicest things about this equation, even though it's going to be of degree 6, is that there are no constants, which is pretty good. So I can just go ahead and distribute that. That's going to give me 4x squared minus 8x to the fourth plus 4x to the 6th, plus x to the 4th, minus 2x squared is equal to 0. Now, let's arrange these terms a little bit. The highest one is 4x to the 6th. Then I have negative 8x to the 4th, plus 1x to the 4th. That's going to make negative 7x to the 4th. Then I have 4x squared minus 2x squared, which is positive 2x squared. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Okay? Now, what I can do here is I can actually pull out an x squared, makes it even nicer. And then I get 4x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 2. Now, this, this is a quartic equation, but there are no cubic terms and there are no linear terms, which is, again, awesome. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and do substitution here. So let's replace x squared with u. And obviously, x equals 0 is a solution, which we don't care about because we don't, we're not really interested in x being 0, right? So that doesn't really matter here. So we're just going to ignore that. So we're going to be solving this equation with the substitution. Let's go ahead and do that. Replace x squared with u. So this is going to be 4u squared minus 7u plus 2 is equal to 0. Finally. We got a quadratic, which we can easily solve. Let's go ahead and solve that. Uh, it's going to have two solutions. So let me go ahead and write down each solution separately. Negative b. Well, I can just go ahead and write it first all together. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 49, minus 4ac. If I multiply 4 times 4 times 2, I, I will get 32 from there. Okay. Divided by 2a, which is 8. Now we can just go ahead and simplify a little bit more here. This is going to be the square root of 17. Such a nice solution. Okay, so these are the u values. And notice that u is equal to x squared. So u is supposed to be greater than 0 because we're not interested in 0. And notice that both of these solutions are positive because 7 is greater than root 17, obviously. So they're both good. Okay, let's go ahead and consider each one then. Let's take the first one as this. Now, notice that this u is equal to x squared. So, and our goal is to find the value of x, right? Okay, so we're going to be solving for x. If you square it both sides, we're going to be getting two solutions from here. 
that's going to be plus minus the square root of 7 plus root 17. And if you square root 8, you're going to get 2 root 2. Okay? So these are the positive cases. And then let's go ahead and do the negative case for you. That's going to be 7 minus root 17 divided by 8. By the same token, it's equal to x squared. And x is going to be equal to the square root of this guy with the plus minus sign. So it's going to look like this. Okay? Awesome. So we got four solutions, which is not a surprise because we were solving a quartic equation, right? Which you could also call biquadratic. Now, among these four solutions, obviously, only one of them is supposed to work, right? How do we know which one? Well, if you kind of look at the value of x here, you're going to notice that in this picture, right? We know that the radius is 1. So this is, this is 1, okay? This distance is 1. So x seems to be a little greater than 1. So if you kind of look at through all these solutions, you're going to notice that actually the only solution, obviously negatives are not going to work for you, right? And there are two positives, right? And if you look at both positives, for example, this one, right? For example, this one. Well, the square root of 17 is pretty close to 4, by the way, right? So this one is going to be like what? Okay, let's try to approximate this solution. Well, this is about 4. So 7 minus 4 is going to be like 3. So this is kind of close to this number, right? Square root of 3 is about 1.7. And root 2 is about 1.4. So if you divide, multiply by 2, that's going to be 2.8. As you see, this is actually going to be less than 1, right? We could probably also verify this in a different way. But anyways... But we're looking for something larger than 1. And obviously, this is going to be less than, much less than 1. So, the only acceptable solution in this case is going to be this one. Okay? Which is, again, you can verify that this actually works. This is going to be our solution. All right? That's the x value that we were looking for. Well, thank you for watching the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.